productive, some have criminal tendencies, all that is bullshit. Children reflect their culture. If you were brought up in a world today, say the headhunters of the Amazon, say you were brought up there, if I went into your dad's hut and said, doesn't it bother you to have 10 shrunken heads? He says, yes, my brother has 20. <laughs> so is that bad? No, that's normal to where he's coming from. If you're brought up in Nazi culture as a baby, Heil Hitler, Deutschland over others, Germany above all, you become a Nazi if you've never seen anything else. So I'm saying no one is to blame for whatever they are. They're culture bound. And all our habits and beliefs are shaped by our culture, even our language. And nobody invented language. And the language we learned in school is thousands of years old. That's why it's difficult to talk to people. Language, and particularly the Bible, is subject to interpretation. When you read the Bible, somebody says, this is what Jesus meant. And another guy says, no, he meant that. And the third person says, you're both wrong. That's why you have Lutheran, Seventh-day Adventist, Catholic, because the Bible is subject to interpretation. So is our everyday language. It's a terrible thing to give people a language that's subject to interpretation. You say things and they come out with something else, totally unrelated, and you think maybe there's something wrong with them. There's something wrong with our language. The big problem is, can we develop a language that's not subject to interpretation? Mathematics isn't subject to interpretation. Structural engineering isn't subject. <coughs> Chemistry isn't. You talk to a chemist in France and give him a formula, he turns out the same thing. If engineering was subject to interpretation, you couldn't build bridges. Do you understand that? You can handle people if the language has general meaning. That's why lawyers exist. They can take language and twist it around, do whatever they want with it. You can't do that in technology. You can't twist mathematics. You can't twist chemistry. So I'm saying the language we learn is, is improper for developing a sane society. And sustainability is a word that has little or no meaning. Sustainability to the medical profession is people get sick and they come to the doctors and make more money with it. Well, that's sustainability. But if you make automobiles that are self-repairing, or electric circuits that are self-repairing, the people that repair electric circuits in this system will get mad at you. So it's not sustainability for them. So when you use the word sustainability, what the hell are you talking about? When we use the word in the Venus Project, we mean the well-being of all the world's people, not a selected few. Now we have more than enough energy, more than enough resources, so everyone can live better than the wealthiest people today. I know it's hard for you to imagine because you've never known anything like that. But do you know there's over two million cars, automobiles a day outside the factories for eight hours while the people are at work? What if those automobiles were used by people that came out of the factory and drove them away? You'd have ten times as many cars available all over the world. Then you have freight yards with freight trains hoping that business would be good next month so those freight trains would be working. In a balanced, load economy, everything works for everybody. There's nothing sitting around. Now, when you design a factory today, the minute you build that factory, the land value goes up. So if you need spare parts, a spare parts factory will not locate near you because the land cost is too high, so they move to Hialeah, Florida. And then you have to have the freight trains pick up stuff all over the country to make things. The free enterprise system is the most wasteful and destructive system ever conceived of. It's a very stupid process where some people live very well. They call it sustainability. But what you have to offer takes things away from them. So that would be unsustainable. So sustainability is a word that has really no meaning unless you define your terms. So when you speak to people, they say, I believe in a freedom society where everybody participates. Participatory democracy. So I meet an American that says, that's what I believe, participatory democracy. I said, did you vote for the space program? I said, I guess not. Did you vote for any highway design? I guess not. Did you vote for the design of the Capitol building? 
No, I guess not. Where the hell do you participate? You don't vote for anybody. They put the people up there for you to vote for. You don't pick the people because you don't even know there exists such a thing as that. So the system you live under is basically the one that creates the problems. So when Obama, got, Obama became elected in the States, they figured he'd do something new. He wouldn't even make it if he were that different. He had to say things that people identified with to get in. And if you do that, you can't change people. You can only change people by offering new ideas. When Edison came out with the electric light, some of his stuff was stolen, some was original, some were made by the people that worked for him. He didn't do everything. And no invention is completely radical. And there are many people doing research on cancer. Let's say you do research on cancer and you find out a hundred things that don't work. That's useful too. So I read this book and two years later I come up with a, some help for cancer and I get a Nobel Prize. What about all the other people working on it? They work just as hard as you do. Giving a person a Nobel Prize discourages other people. You don't have to do those things. When people are properly educated, they feel good because they can add to cancer or add to the control of heart disease. They don't work for money. When people work for money, can you really trust them? I got just a car you're looking for. I got just a house you're looking for. All this is bullshit. And the kind of world you live in is essentially bullshit. And that's what it's made of. And there are no... I want to say there's really no bad words. Maybe if this young lady baked a pie and dropped it, she might say, fiddly dee. And the guy might say, shit, if he drops a pie. That's because he's sorry he dropped the pie. That's what it means. When the guy says bullshit, it means the guy can't accept what you're saying. It has nothing to do with fecal matter of the bull. So the way we use language, you know, uh, bothers some people. I spoke at Columbia University and I used profanity, and one of the academicians said, if, if your mother were here, would you use that kind of language? So I said, Mother, will you stand up? <laughs> so, uh, in other words, the word, another thing that you have to learn is that the word love is another bullshit word. When you fall in love at 15, it's different than falling in love at 20. And when you're 27, your concept of love is different again. So all of us, I'm sure all of us will agree we've done stupid things in the past. Okay, if you agree with that, if you live with a replica of yourself, how long will you be together? You understand? You're a changing organism. You're always changing. And the people think that I believe in utopia. I don't. I don't believe there's any fixed system. It keeps changing. Your computers don't stop at a certain time and that's it. You go on and on, they get smaller and faster and do more. And cameras don't need film anymore. And in the future, they'll tell you a lot about the weather and everything else. So there's no final frontiers. There's no best society. There's no best laptop or camera. So children in the future will be educated to accept change, not hang on to tradition. Tradition is old systems that worked one time. So we can examine them and ask whether that system should be preserved. An elderly Jewish man came up to me one day and said, will you permit tradition in the future? I said, will you? He said, yes. I said, the Nazis meet once a month. For, for 75 years, is that okay with you? He said, no. I said, who selects what tradition? You know, your tradition, his tradition? So all of these things, Christmas is business, has nothing to do with anything. And, and look, we don't go to other countries to bring democracy. That's another whack of shit. We go there for their resources, their oil, their cheap labor. And the business of armament is a real big industry, selling armament. So war is good business. I had a friend that was a pilot in World War I. He told me he flew over German munition storage systems and he was ordered not to bomb it. 